Greetings to all my cyberspace friends out there in YouTube land. I'm Rock Reynolds coming to you with a new improved lesson 104 on the fiddle concerning the bow. It's not that the first version sucked. It was good. This one's a little better. The bow movement is a little more complicated than I had originally thought and I'm going to go over some of the nuances and I'd also like to describe that I've been watching lots of fiddlers and lots of fiddlers have different ways of doing things. So I'm going to talk about one way of doing things. Figure out on your own which is best for you and use that. I'm going to talk about four items here. I'm going to talk about general bow movement. I'm going to talk about the bow height, the, the angle of attack, the vertical angle of attack. I'm going to talk about the difference between the up bow and the down bow and I'm going to talk about the grip. The themes are going to be as before. I'm going to be as relaxed as I can be. We want to move as little mass as possible and I want to move as few muscles as possible. The less mass I move, the easier it is to move. The fewer muscles I use, the easier it is to control. I'd like to get down to one muscle at a time. Sometimes that may not be quite possible, but we'll see what we can do. The general bow. In the first lesson, I said to just bend at the elbow. I'm going to modify that instruction. Bending at the elbow is the most optimum way to move the bow, but when my hand gets to about here, the horizontal, the horizontal angle of attack gets all screwed up. So to accommodate that and to keep a smooth bow movement, once I get my arm to here, I stop using the inside muscle here and I switch over to the upper arm muscle. Going back, upper arm, and then the elbow. One of the two, not both at the same time. Trying to keep that bow nice and smooth. The bow height. There are seven angles of attack that the bow needs to attack that fiddle. There's each one of the four strings, one, two, three, four, and there's each of the two each of the three double stops. One, two, three, seven different angles of attack. There's a couple different ways to change the bow height. One of the ways you can change the bow height is by changing the angle of the fiddle. If you change the angle of the fiddle, that change the, changes the angle of attack on the bow. I recommend to not do that, but some fiddlers may do that. I said on the first lesson to not raise, another way to do that is to raise your upper arm. That changes the angle of attack, or the, the forearm. On the first lesson I said not to do that, but I'm going to back off on that a little bit. Some fiddlers seem to have pretty good success with that, and that may especially be good for cross shuffling or for one note at a time and I do admit that this is less mass than this. When Mark O'Connor gets up near the up bow he hunches his shoulder up. That's another way to raise the bow up. What I prefer and I still prefer is just using this upper muscle here on the shoulder and raising the arm that way. I'm not going to talk about the difference between the up bow and the down bow. I mentioned this in the first version of the lesson, but I'm going to go into it in a little more detail, and I think it's a little more complicated than even I thought. On a down bow, what I want to do is just let the weight of the hand grab onto the bow, and just by relaxing this muscle, or the upper arm muscle, just let it relax and let the, let the weight of the hand take the bow down. All I'm doing is moving one muscle there. The up bow, I need to lift up the bow. 
And in order to do that, I need to adjust my hand just a little bit. And you watch all the good fiddlers, they pretty much do this too. An exaggerated version of the hand position on a down bow versus up bow, here's an exaggerated position. Here's an unexaggerated position, down bow, up bow, down bow, up bow. A little bit of a twist there, but what I need to do is, when I'm using that muscle, is I need to lift the bow for the up bow. Let the hand drop, let it lift for the up bow, and notice that on the up bow, and you watch the good fiddlers, their hand is pretty much bent like that once it gets to the top. When they switch to the down bow, they flatten out the wrist. Lift the bow up, let the, bow, let the wrist bend, flatten it out, let the arm drop. With that change in geometry between the flat wrist on the down bow and the up and the bent wrist on the up bow, that changes the geometry of the hand. Something has to be done to accommodate that difference in height if you're staying on the same strings. What I've been doing on the up bow is using a second muscle. Using just a little bit of this back arm here to just lift up that, lift the upper arm just a little bit on the up bow and let it drop back down on the down bow. Flat wrist, let the arm extend on the down bow. Flip it around, lift up the arm a little bit on the up bow. have different grips. A year and a half ago I changed to the thumb under the frog grip. And what I do is I also like to keep this little pinky up here to give me some balance on that bow by putting the thumb underneath the frog as opposed to the classical position. There's the classical position with the thumb between the strings between the strings and the stick. Put the thumb underneath the frog it gives me a wider area of control and with that little pinky on the end of the bow, on the nut there, gives me more, con more control. Now with all these different arm positions, how do I know where to put my arm? And what I've been doing more recently is just concentrating on the grip. If the grip feels right, that's where the arm's supposed to be. If the grip doesn't feel right, you need to change where the arm is. So, here's a close-up look here. What I do is I get a nice little cocoon right there. And whether you touch these or not, I don't think it's that important, but I do like to keep this grip constant. On the down bow, there's a little bit of pressure there, right at this spot here. That's where the weight of the hand goes. On the up bow, just the little flip the pressure point kind of stays the same place. As a result, both on the down bow and the up bow, even though I'm changing the geometry of the hand, the grip pretty much feels the same. So I try to keep the same grip feel no matter what I'm doing. One more thing, two more things. Check out my notes here. Timing. One of the issues I was having is, let's say you have note number one and you're going to note number two. What I was doing was staying on note number one until it was done and then deciding to go to note number two, which put me a little bit behind the curve. What one needs to do in most cases, depending on the musical aspect you're, for which you are searching, is be at the beginning of note number two, at the beginning of the note, which may mean thinking ahead just a little bit. But you want, if you're changing strings, going to another note, you want your arm to be in position at the beginning of that note. You don't want to be going into that position 
while you're starting the note. You want to be there at the start of the note, all ready to go. Make the turn arc sharp. Especially with the elbow there. Try to keep the upper arm 90 degrees here until you run out of that room and have to switch to the upper arm. In fact, the up bow, the first movement is a little bit up and then over. Down, up, and then over. Reynolds, and it's been a pleasure serving your fiddle educational needs.